tag on this text and for a few moments with your prayers I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach is your bread in the right hands is your bread <clears throat> in the right hands is your bread in the right hands is your life a message or is it just a mess is your life a force or a farce? Permit me to take a moment and extrapolate those particular questions and see if we can lay bare our souls on the examination table of our own honest scrutiny to actually see where we are. Let me park here parenthetically and raise this question for you to honestly consider. What is the theme of your life? What does your life mean? Is it a message or or is it just a hot mess? Because a whole lot of folk, that's their life. It's just one hot mess, just drama after drama. And please don't forget, if you're always in drama, evidently there's some drama king or drama queen in you. If you are always in the midst of mess, guess what? It's because you're a messy individual. And so the question I'm raising today to begin this message is, is your life a message or is it a mess? Let me take it one step further. Is it a force or is it a farce? A force or a false? That's a deep question, huh? Because if it's a force, that is a symbol of power, power that makes a difference. Or is it a farce? Because if it is a farce, that means you look one way to folk, but the reality is you another way. It means you wear one face in church, but you got another face when you leave church. It simply means you faking it until you make it. You're not a force. You are a farce. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I'm really doing the best I can, so watch this. I'm asking these questions because, my brothers and sisters, it dawned on me your response to these questions have everything to do with the hands that you are in. Whose hands are you in? Understand in Scripture that the hand is the symbol of power. And so when I raise the question, whose hand are you in? It simply is a question that, re that, that re needs a response, and the response has to do with, are you in the hands of God? Watch it, under the power or of God, or are you in the hands of something or someone else? Whose hands are you in? And let's keep it real. This is still a Good Friday world. In a Good Friday world, injustice reigns, and justice is delayed, if not at all denied. I think you will agree with me it's a Good Friday world when Zimmerman is still walking around and Trayvon is in the ground dead. That's a Good Friday world. Why is Zimmerman walking around? Could it be that justice has been delayed because the police officers were caught in a cover-up because they had made a phone call to Zimmerman's daddy who was a former judge and now they want to cover their tracks with by, by besmirching the reputation of Trayvon. Trayvon, Trayvon doing drugs if he did it because we don't even know he did it. All they found was an empty bag with traces of marijuana, but Trayvon, if he did it or didn't do it, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact he was hunted down by a wannabe, wannabe robocop who shot him dead and he shouldn't be dead. He wasn't shot because of the hoodie. They trying to make a big deal out of the hoodie. No, it wasn't the hoodie, baby baba. As a matter of fact, they're trying to make a big deal of the hoodie because they know we weren't the first ones to wear hoodies. The first ones to wear hoodies in this country, they had these tall uh, things going up like that. That's who wore the hoodie first. So before you go there, maybe they should have been shot down. If you want to use that kind of rationale, I'm simply trying to say, my brothers and sisters, that in a Good Friday world, justice is delayed and denied. Jesus the Christ 
Christ, there was no justice. He should not. He was innocent. He should not have been lynched. He should not have been strange fruit. But Jesus is hung up on a cross. Hope is hung up. Love is lynched. And the Bible lets us know our Savior dies. It's a terrible thing on a cross, not an icon that you wear around your neck, but a cross, that symbol of oppression that was a deterrent to revolution under the oppression of the Roman Empire. That's the kind of cross that Jesus was lynched on. But the Bible lets us know they put him in the tomb. And early Sunday morning, God said, don't worry about that because I've got the last word. I'm going to just shout on that for just a second because that's why we pack our church on Resurrection Sunday. It's because injustice doesn't have the last word. God has the last word. Your haters don't have the last word. God has the last word. Your boss don't even have the last word. God has the last word. I guess y'all need some last words since y'all ain't getting this thing. If you run out of money and you and your strength change, you're strange. If you walk by faith, I got good news for you. God has the last word, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. If you're confused about how your situation's going to turn out, God has the last word. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to God's purposes. If your heart is broken and you're weeping bitter tears because the night is long, God has the last word. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If you're tired and discouraged and feel like you can't go on, God has the last word. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary. What? Does anybody know God has the last word? If your haters come at you, God has the last word because no weapon formed against you. Is there anybody here who's glad that resurrection lets us know God has the last word? Oh, Fred Haynes, you were doing all right as long as you said he took it and blessed it. What you mean he broke it? Mm -hmm. He broke it. And let me tell you something. You live long enough, life will break you. I don't care how big your Bible is, how much you come to church, God will take you, bless you, break you. I'm looking at somebody, and right now I'm in your Kool-Aid. I'm calling out your flavor. I done pulled up to your address. You think I've been hanging with you this week? No. I'm just giving you what the Word says. He took it, he blessed it, and he didn't stop there. Had the nerve to break it. Y'all missing your shout right here because you just like God to bless us. You just want a God to prosper you. And that's a beautiful thing, but don't stop at that because God can't really use you until you've been bruised. God can't really serve you unless you've been broken. And let me tell you something here. When I look back over my life, people ask me, how do you know what you know? It just ain't books I've read. I know what I know because I've got some wisdom from my wounds. I've got some sagacity from my scars. It's my brokenness that has released some stuff from me and in me that wouldn't have come had I not been to hell and back. But here's your shout. When you go to hell and back. The good news is hell and back means you got a round trip ticket. Hell didn't have the last word on you. You made it back, but when you got back, you came back stronger, wiser, and better. Let me quit by telling y'all this. Let me quit by telling y'all this. I was in New York this week, and, uh, and so I was, I, I was staying at this hotel in Manhattan, and uh, what happened is that I was coming in at night. I was coming in at night, and, and you know, I can say I'm moving a whole lot better than I had an accident a couple of months ago, but I'm moving, grooving, getting, my, getting all that thing back because God is good like that, and y'all been praying for me, so I'm getting that back. But Wednesday, I'd walked so much because I'd gone down to the White House uh, for the Easter prayer breakfast, and then, because uh, Tuesday night I preached in 
uh, New York. Monday night, I preached in Houston. Tuesday night, New York. And then Wednesday, I had to catch an early plane, 6 a.m., to get down to D.C. And then I had to get back to New York because I was preaching Wednesday and Thursday in New York. And then Friday, preaching in Chicago. So I've been on a tour this week. That's how that thing has been. But by Wednesday, I mean, my knee was saying, you ain't moving no more. And so, so I, I, I get dropped off after preaching Wednesday night, long day. I told you my schedule. And I come into the hotel, and when I go through, and y'all, let me just tell you what happened. I pressed that handicap thing that had the doors open for me because I didn't even feel like opening no doors. So the doors swung wide open for me, and I walked on through the door. No, I limped through the doors. And so I'm limping through the door, and I see the elevator that goes to the floor section that I'm going to because I was in one of those hotels where the elevators went only so high, and then another ele set of elevators went, you know, from that height to the next height. And so I was in the, 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 the top height because I'm a top Negro, so, so don't be hating on your boy, okay? So watch what happened. Here I am. Here I am. Don't miss this. Here I am. I'm limping in, and when I'm limping in, the door is open to my elevator. And so, but I can't run. And next thing I know, I'm limping towards my elevator, and there's somebody on the elevator, and I say, please, hold the elevator. And guess what? He, watched this, his little kid, his little kid, jumped in front of the door, much to the consternation of the daddy. And the little kid held the elevator for me. I got on the elevator because a little kid, the son evidently of the father, the little kid got between the elevator door and its closing, the, the son of the daddy. You're not getting this thing yet. The father was there, but, but the son got between the elevator door and because the son made that sacrifice, I was able to limp on through because of what the son did who was there with his daddy. Now, now the rest of y'all are slow, but can I go ahead and go there right quick? The only reason that we got Resurrection Sunday to celebrate is because the son came all the way down from glory and stood between the door of evil and sin and allowed us in grace to pass on through. That ain't the shout. The shout is, I got on the elevator and that little precocious boy, guess what that little boy said? That little boy said, I'm glad you made it, sir. I said, thank you for letting me on. He said, well, we're on our way to the top. And I figured since we're on our way to the top, we might as well bring somebody with us. Y'all, I'm done. But that's my word to anybody in here. If you love God for yourself and you on your way to the top, you ought to open up the door for somebody because Jesus opened up the door for you. And since he opened up the door for you, open up that door because there's a child that needs to come through that door. There's a drug addict that needs to come through that door. A prostitute, somebody who needs to come through the door, but they won't come through unless you open the door. Put your bread. In the Lord's hands, he'll take it, bless it, break it, and then serve it. FW.